computer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chat Channel. I'm your host, Tim Hayden. We have a great show for you today. We have the incredible, marvelous Yvette Freeman. Miss okay. Freeman is an actress, singer, and director. She made her Broadway debut in 1979 in the original production of Ain't Misbehaving. She won the Obie Award for Distinguished Performance by an Actress for her portrayal of Dinah Washington in the 1998 Broadway play Dinah Was. She has also won eight Screen Actors Awards and a People's Choice Award. On television, she's best known for her roles as Halle Adams in the NBC medical drama series ER. Evelyn Smalley in the TV series Working, and Irma Lerman in Orange is the New Black. Hello, Ms. Freeman. Welcome. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Doing great. Thank you so much for being here today. Glad to be here. Um, well, I know I've just went through some of just a part of your background. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, my a little bit about myself. We'll see. I'm old. I've been around a long time. I still love the business. I look at just about every TV show going on and I love audio books. I have two dogs, two cats, a wonderful husband, and I still live in LA proper. And I love LA. <laughs> California. Uh -huh. I love California. I'm going to have to get out there sometime. I've never been to California. I think that'd be oh, fun. Oh, it's beautiful. Be out there. Beautiful. Beautiful, well, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to go way back to the beginning. What uh -oh. were you like as a child? Um, well, not that I remember it that much, um, but I think I was a little pushy. Um, my mom was my best friend. Um, my sister loved me, but she didn't like to be dressed like me. Um, twins, considering she was older, she didn't appreciate that. And um, <laughs> let's see. There's seven of us, still seven of us. Wow. And um, it's, a, it's a good family. I, I, I grew up good. My parents were really great parents. Um, what were, did someone inspire you as a child to make you want to be an actress or is it just something that you want to be? A couple of people um, really got me looking at uh, theater and all. Uh, my father was a musician, um, piano player, um, but he, he, you know, he played on the weekends and he played organ, he played piano, he had a wonderful voice and we would have these, um, he would have rehearsals in our living room. So we'd have all the jazz people that come, come through town and um, I would sit underneath the, the piano, we had a grand piano and listen to him, you know, it was great, it was great, but he would never let me sing. He wanted me to go to college, which I did. Yeah. He didn't want me to be a jazz singer. Ended up being a jazz singer. <laughs> and wasn't he a jazz player, though? Yes. Yes. But he, <laughs> he wanted, he wanted um, it's a struggle to be an artist. It's oh, still nice. a struggle forever. And um, so you really have to love it to do this without being totally destroyed by this business, the world. You know, so you got to love it. Because there's a lot of turn downs. Oh, yes. I, I'm not in the biz like you are, but just mm. doing what I'm doing. You know, it, you, you you get so many more no's than you do yeses at first. <laughs> That's right. That's why you have to love it so you can keep pushing through. And I do. I love to talk. I love what I'm doing here. I love raising awareness. All of that fun stuff. Sure. Well, you got, your, you got your start in Broadway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to New York. I, I, well, I went to University of Delaware, where our president went to, Biden, yes. and his wife. Thank you very much. Um, and I majored in art and theater. And then I went to New York City to, to be in. I always want, knew what I wanted to be. So it was really exciting back when. You know, I wouldn't live there now because I'm too old. It's too hard to live there. But right. Oh, I still go in to get my fix of plays and musicals. You got to do that to keep up. It's expensive there too. Well, it's I guess it's just about the same as California. Uh, I think California is much higher than any place. No, that's untrue because New York, those little apartments are costing thousands of dollars 
which is outrageous. But anyway, let's not even get there because I'll start talking <laughs> bad about them. Well, we can talk all you want to. We got all day. <laughs> well, you, oh, you know what? Let me ask you how long this one's going to be. How is it? How long are we going to talk? However I'll long you'd like. We'll go on as however long you'd like to. Oh, no. We don't have to do it too long. I got I to gotta take my dogs for a walk before it gets too hot out here. Hear that? All right. Um, well, you played Halle. I want to make sure I said it correct because I know during the series that was brought up in the series that it had to be pronounced Halle. Yes. Yes. My Which It's my grandmother's so. name. Oh, really? That's interesting. Was, yeah. Yeah. I got that I just got, a coincidence? coincidence? No. Um, it was... They originally, I think, wanted an uh, an East Indian woman because they had this name that was like totally I couldn't even pronounce, but it was, still had the the spelling of Halle, and so I just said, could it be my grandmother's name? Her name is Halle, and so I just added a little flinch to it, and they said, yeah, and that's um, cool. yeah. So what, that's cool. what was your uh, uh, audition like for ER? Uh-huh. Well, let me see. There were four of us out in the um, ante room before you go into the uh, audition room, which was a small office. And you got people stuffed in there and they're all looking at you. So when it was my turn, um, my wonderful John Levy, who's a casting director of all to end all casting directors, he's great. Um, he pushed me forward and I told him no. I'm not ready. I wasn't ready to turn the page. And evidently that attitude was what they wanted. <laughs> and I had the job by the time I got home. Because it was the last yeah. call. Yeah. Just like any ER, the nurses run the ER. And That's right. you you ran that ER for sure. <laughs> That's right. That was you, a great... did a, hmm? uh, you did a lot of other stuff too on TV. You've done Nip Tut, Presidio uh, Med, The Tick. That's life, Boston Public, Judge and Amy, my PD Blue. I mean, and many, yeah. many more. That's not even mentioning your movies. Yeah. Your yeah. Film, you? Yep. You I've played been in one of my play. favorite. You played in one of my favorite movies too, Children of the Corn, which was three mm -hmm. for you. But <laughs> I've never seen it. Really? I've never seen it because when they call, they called me in to do the plaster of my face, and um, and okay, got that. Okay, and then they called me in to make the screams of the plas plaster thing of my face melt. Well, I saw that much, turn my back to the screen, <laughs> finish doing my screaming, and that was it. I didn't want to see no more. I didn't want to see myself die. <laughs> I was just to say that would be odd to see yourself die. <laughs> I didn't want to see it. I, to this day, I have not seen that movie. So, well, mm -mm. I, I'm, a, I'm a horror fan. I like the horror movies, so it's kind of my genre. I do too, uh, but I don't like seeing myself being burned up. <laughs> no, no. So I guess being on the set wasn't creepy or anything at the time because everything going on. Oh no, it's everything. You don't get to see a, a whole movie. You just see your part in the movie, and you only oh, participate okay. in your part. So if something happens in that part, that's that's great. But you know, it's 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 not put together until the end. And that's when you sit there like the audience to see the whole thing. See, I think I must have it Hollywood making films wrong in my head. In my mind, I'm thinking they'll, they'll have everybody there and have this scene and then jump to this scene. No, no. not at all. You might do a reading in the beginning, but you don't get to see, unless you ask the director to let you on the set, you know, to see whatever somebody else is doing, working on. But, that's okay. That's the way um, films are shot, piece right. by piece by piece, and they can shoot it any kind of way from the beginning to the end to the end to the beginning. It's really crazy, and you really have to have your technique down to get do you know film because you got to jump to become that part at that particular time in the movie, and you got to know how you're supposed to be. So anyway, that's a whole bunch of stuff, but yeah, uh, that's. I, I, I'm a nerd. I like all of that stuff. I like to hear how all this is made. Uh, well, back to uh, ER. Uh, I think this is incorrect on my research. They've listed six people that made it all 15 years on ER, and I don't think that's correct. I, for my count, it was four. Some I think left and came back. I think some left and came back for an episode or two, but I, I think it was 
you and Amy Aquino. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, Malik Deezer mm -hmm. D was on there. Uh, mm -hmm. And Laura Sur Suron. Yes. I know they've got Lydia Ellen Crawford listed, but she kind of left for and and out. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, it. that is isn't very impressive, especially with all of the turnovers that they've had throughout that 15 years. Well, we were considered the fabric of the show. We were always there. And if you ever turned ER on and saw one of us, you knew where you were. You know, you knew what time, what place and everything. Because they would change all kinds of the stars and all that kind of stuff all the time. I just finished watching the whole series over. It took me a while, but I just finished oh my it. Gosh. <laughs> uh, so being the fabric, I guess you had a lot of the actors coming to you for direction as far as the show's history or no character no i would have, no. I would have. actors uh guest actors they come in they're trained and then they they might be a little scared in the beginning um but um they're professionals and the ones that lasted really were good man you had to have a week sometimes would take 20 some takes to get one of those um uh, round about the whole um, hospital, those those shots. You don't want to be the last one and mess up. I would love to see this. Have seen the set because they did such a good job. It looked like it was filmed inside the building, enclosed walls, and I'm sure it didn't have all enclosed walls. No, it was in the studio on Warner Brothers, um, but they copied it after a hospital that we started. We did the pilot. And and then as the years went by, they fixed it up and kept kept it going. But it was a workable, almost workable hospital. The trauma rooms and all the things that we used, that different companies would bring the things and teach us how to use them. And um, oh, it was fabulous. We learned so much, neat. sometimes too much. I knew they did that on Grey's Anatomy because when the pandemic hit, they took a lot of their excess product and distribute it to the first responders and frontline workers isn't that great that's that, one that was great you yeah. brought up uh guest guest doctors on your uh, show on er mm -hmm. you had some good ones i mean rosemary clooney red buttons alan alda sally field i think i just saw yeah. uh burgess barrett uh, was it uh -huh. i think i just saw uh -huh. him on the last episode yep 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 everyone it was just wonderful just to see them work. And they I, I don't think anyone disappointed me. All those stars, they didn't disappoint. They were great. And they were, they had a connection like Alden Alda. Alan Alda, I absolutely loved him. He knew everyone's name, even if you were in the craft service area. He knew everyone. And yes. it, it was just wonderful. It made you feel good. And Rosemary Clooney, Oh. oh my goodness, that would have been. Oh, I, don't fan, I would have fanned out for sure on that. I'm fanning out with you. I can't imagine. You know, I got to sing clearly. for her. I got to sing Did for her really? on Hollywood. Right. Yeah, Boulevard. Uh, George Clooney. He um, did a birthday party or some smash thing, and we, they closed off Hollywood Boulevard. We had an orchestra. My husband played, and I sang to her. I was like. <laughs> My gosh! Oh wow! My heart, I can incredible. still remember that. That's oh. almost that's almost like getting complimented on your work by like what I consider a classic actor yeah. or actress. You are a full on actress. Oh. I mean, full blown celebrity. <laughs> but I have to kind of classify Rosemary Clooney and she's Red a star. Buddies. They're they're classics. <laughs> they're, they were fantastic and good people and nice people to work with. I can remember, uh, I don't think it's only about one person, and I'm not going to say who it, who it is. No, don't. Please don't. <laughs> I won't. But um, mostly everyone, was, they were beautiful, nice people, and loved to work. You know? And anyway, I'm, I well, feel very blessed. Alan Alda is in his 80s, and he's still working. Uh, I just saw a thing. They did a CBS Morning News on him this past week uh, about his, I think it's Parkinson's. Uh -huh. Scott, and he's still working. He's still going to classes and helping out with classes. See, that makes me feel good because he's a few years older than me. <laughs> but, you know, to keep going and keep working when things are presented to you, you know, 
I have a girlfriend, June Squibb, look her up. She had a nomination um, for an Academy Award for, oh, what was the movie? Well, anyway, she's getting ready to shoot her movie. So you should talk to her too. Um, uh, well. And she's 92 going on 93. Clear as a bell. Uh. Everything. She's, I, it's amazing. I just, I mean, I, we hang out. <laughs> we, we hang out. We go shopping. You're good at segues because that was what my next thing was going to be about. Because while you were on the show, the terminology. I mean, I would, when I was in high school, I did medical terminology. So I knew about that much of it. What mm-hmm. you all know and being able to pronounce it, incredible. Well, we had um, technical advisors who were doctors who um, b- would block the scenes and help us tell us what, how to say the, the words, you know, because I wouldn't know what I was talking about. Still don't. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't save anybody. Um, but it was just, the show was such a groundbreaking show. They. Yes, ma'am. Our our hospital scenes in the beginning started, uh, we would do the trauma scenes and we would fake them. So you would see everything. You wouldn't see what's going below under here. Okay. So we've been going like this and that. And you would, the camera would not show, shoot that because we were faking it totally. Right. But by the next couple of years, they were designing hearts that pump that they could shoot from above. Oh, wow. Mind you, somebody's underneath the table pumping it. And we're like, you know, doing whatever, but you could see it. it looked like blood was flowing over all that. And the babies in the beginning, yes. we used real babies. <coughs> Excuse me. They have babies made now that look like babies and they move from our show. Hold it. I got a call. Can you hold for a second? Yes, ma'am. Take your time. <laughs> hold on. Get your drink. Get your drink, please. That's where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> if y'all didn't, if y'all weren't aware, uh, Miss Freeman also played on The Bold and the Beautiful, Days of Our Lives. Um, some of her uh, other movies that she was in was Switch, Dead Again, uh, Angus Bethune, uh-huh. Norma and Marilyn. Uh, I, she's got so such a long resume of shows and movies that I couldn't get them all in on this. Uh, if you if you want it, you need to go check out her uh, face or her page, her web page. It has her biography, her some of her music. You really need to check that out. Um, you, I see that you got married in 1996 to Mr. Oh, thank Lanny you. Hartley. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Lanny Hartley, who is a jazz pianist. You're keeping with the jazz theme again. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's also a music composer. That's yep. got to be, I mean, you sing beautifully. You've got to, I mean, that's got to be amazing to have him play and you sing. I just, <laughs> your family well, must be amazed when you're. They, they all do it. They all do it. It's a little big deal. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, no. Um, he's fabulous. And, and he's uh, up there in age too, just like me and still doing it. Still, you know, we slowed down a little bit, but. You know, he's fabulous, great musician. And um he's he's in there in his office or his studio. And another credit that Miss Freeman has is she is a director. She directed uh The Blessing Way. What was that like being on the other side of the camera? I absolutely loved it. Um I wrote directed a couple pieces and um I was with the um, directing workshop for women at AFI. Got into I was in the 14th year of it, and a lot of your directing the women who are directing now all come from that program. Oh, and, really? Yeah. So I've it, heard of I, that little bit about that program, the meetings that y'all have. Uh, yeah, it's that's it's just working together, you know, collaborating together. Yep, it's a great great program, and. Um, but I, you know, I didn't cross over really into big time doing doing that because I didn't push as hard as I wanted to or should have. I'm not sure. It's 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 a hustle out here, and you got to make your choices. And I'm now a homebody more than anything else. I paint too. I love painting, and uh, I have a garden. Um, and it's just my husband and I in this house of our animals. Yeah, so. 
you know, theater and well, no, that's untrue. I'm getting ready to, to direct um, um, Blues in the Night um, down at North Coast Rep here. That's down near San Diego. Yes. Um, that starts in December. And it's the musical, stage oh, wow. musical. So, yeah, I do a little things like that now. That and is also, right down your it's right down your alley. Acting, singing, and you get to tell them what to do. I love that. <laughs> Which do you prefer, uh, in front of the camera or behind? Um, I like stage. Stage. And stage. And, and then in front and then in back. I like it all. You know, it depends on the project, too. You know, Sometimes you get projects that, you know, you say a couple of lines, you just float through. But other times you get, I just did a, um, um, a short film called The Bat, Bat, Boy, Bat Boy. And it's coming out in November, I believe. And um, it was just too much fun. Two, these young people, they put it together and from UCLA. And it's just, was enjoyable to do this movie. So look for it. Um. When you are acting, uh, so I can ask you this because you've done both. You've done daytime and you've done prime time. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard the difference from both sides and you've experienced it, which is tougher because I know daytime you've got 40 pages to learn in a day and nighttime you've got 20 takes to do. And <laughs> Okay. Well, they both have their goods, their pluses. Um, the daytime they change it so fast, you know, they, the writing just go, and you have to be fast. Your memorization is like key. Um, it's, I don't know if it's harder. Mm, well, an evening show, you, you got, they both got their pluses. Um, I'm trying to think which one I'm trying to be nice to. I'm trying not to say anything. Um, Put it this way, you've got to know your shots, you got to know your character, you got to know everything um, before you even get the script because you got to be yeah. fast. Either way, you got to be fast. And when they hire people for jobs on TV shows, it's usually, and I'm going to, mm, um, you are close to your character, so you don't have to reach out that far to act. Okay, movies, you got to work. Okay, you got is which are it's lovely plays on Broadway and things like that. That's a lot of work, but doing movie television shows and I'm trying to say put it well, this I way, can, right? Well, I on a previous on my first episode of the show, not ours, but another episode, I did uh, talk with Dave and I explained to everybody that's watching. Being an actor is not an easy job. Because, no. Um, the, the lines you got to learn. You got to know what your face is doing. You got to know what your body is doing. You got to know where to step, not to step in front of. There's just, and so much more, too. It's just not as easy as people assume it is. I always assumed it till I really looked into it and started doing it, you know. It's not easy. It's hard work. You do 14, 15 hours a day, Friday nights. I don't know. They can work you to whatever. Um, it's hard work. And and the thing is, is that all shows that have a long run like ER, um, you become a family because you're there with them more so than their, their, your, their own family. So, and then you break up and then you go, where's my family? Then you go get the next family for the next show if you're you know blessed. So it's those groupings throughout your life. And you connect with maybe one, two or three, like Ellen Crawford and I, we're still buddies. Okay. She's great. Lara Sarone. Yeah. We're buddies. We still talk to each other and connect. So you that's who I carried out of uh ER. Because everybody else yeah. their cars. Clooney, I just saw him on TV this morning with his beautiful wife. Yes, and, I saw that. Yeah, it's a good man. That's a good man. Still he's from here. He's from here in Kentucky too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He's got a little uh, slight little accent underneath there, just slight. You know, I, mine's more prominent. Uh, yes, it I is. You got one. I was told not to try to hide it any longer because I've mm. tried to muffle it. And uh, a couple of celebrities who I've talked to said, so "Don't, no, <laughs> don't it's beautiful. hide it." Yeah. Um, 
y'all had a lot of y'all started a lot of people's career on ER too. I mean, yeah. I'm not even gonna name any because there's so many. I, but yeah. I was watching. I'm like, oh, they're so and so. Oh my gosh, they're so so. Yeah, I didn't know they're on it. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, We're, it's, it was a wonderful show. I heard a little rumor about you. Mm-mm. I heard you like to cook. Can't you tell? I keep losing weight, gaining weight, whatever it's. I love to cook. Anything. I've got more cookbooks in this house. I love them. My husband's trying to move them out of the house because we're getting <laughs> old. We should be, you know, downsizing and stuff like that. Yes. And yes, I love to cook and I love to eat. Can't Do you have fat. a favorite dish you like to cook? Um, I can do some good old, you know, soul cooking, fried chicken and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I can also do some French cooking, you know, and I took my husband gave me started giving me uh, cooking lessons, you know, little classes before all the That's pandemic cool. and all that. Yeah. And um, that was fun. I might start that back up again. So how was yeah. it? How did you survive the pandemic? Speaking of, you know, I'm sad to say this. I mean, I mean it was bad. But it was good because I hunkered down in my house, you know, and it was my husband and I and and it was just wonderful. I mean, basically, we got to know each other really well because we had to lean on each other and be there for each other. Right. And um, I I loved it. And I, and I love this Zoom thing that we have going because you can yes. talk to anybody around the world. You can see your church and you can do all kinds of things. Look with the Zoom. And that didn't happen until the, the pandemic. Right. Yeah. It kind of forced churches and other places to get up with the times as far mm-hmm. as technology. I know Zoom is, was a heaven sent. As soon as it started, my family is spread out. I've got Indiana, Idaho, Tennessee, South Carolina. So when the pandemic yeah. started, my family started doing a weekly Zoom every yes. Sunday. Yes. And yes. if you can come on, come on. If you can't, you can't. Right. So we, we're, we're still doing it. And it has brought yep. our family so close. I mean, so much. We were close before, but it brought us so much more closer. Yeah. Yep. That's you found out what was important to you during um, the pandemic. For and sure. Who was important. Yes, definitely. So what mm-hmm. do you like to do in your free time? I like to go to the beach just to look at the water, not to get in, not to walk on. I mean, not to get in just to look. It calms me down. Um, I paint, I garden, I um, take care of my animals. We walk up and walk every day. Um, uh, There's so many things that I like to look at TV. I like to look at movies Um, and um, travel. I'm trying to, I want to go to Alaska this year. Well, no, not until May, because I missed it. I missed the window. It should be September. So I'm going to, I'll do May. And, um, I have some grandchildren, but they're not mine. I don't have any children, but I have, I've been adopted, <laughs> you yes, know, as a grandmother and I like to see them. There's family some is not blood. necessarily blood. Family's not necessarily blood. There you go. Yes, exactly. And, you know, and I'm just, I like the, oh, audio books. I love audio books um, cause I can sit and listen to them and knit. And um, and my husband and I would we started that during the pandemic, listening to stories together, and yeah, I, I can think we can. I love and I love eating. Me too. <laughs> you can only see me from here up. So <laughs> hey, so you can only see me from here up too. You know? <laughs> Speaking yeah. of what you uh, have, you ever thought about doing some online classes, teaching some online classes, acting? I have been teaching. I've been. I've. I'm now a teaching artist through the union. They have this program, and I took it, and I taught this time this year, uh, first, second, third grade art classes because my first degree is in art, and um, I taught them how to draw from shapes. They were fantastic. I had so much fun. The sweethearts, they're just sweet, and I've. I've done lectures and, you know, different things around the country, you know, but I'm also, like I said, I'm slowing down. I don't want to travel too far anymore. Right. Well, you know? with technology, you kind of don't have to anymore. You can make it a video conference. Yeah, yeah but art <laughs> theater, you want to be there with the people. Right, because you can, you can feel, feel 
the room. You can feel what's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, I had seen a, a an earlier interview with you where you were talking about during the pandemic doing in, uh, auditions. That's, oh, they're still doing this. This is it's, it's part of life now. You you um, set up your own camera or your iPhone, and you do the audition with the, your reader, and you shoot it yourself, and you send it in to them. This wow. is still going on, and they love it because it's easier. You can see somebody from all across the country for a part, you know, because you can just send in your tapes, you know, if your agent gets you an audition. And, um, yeah, that's that's something that's going to last now forever. <laughs> that's almost do like, do it. That's almost like before you get your star, when you're getting your start, sending out your own yeah. videos to try to get a job. Well, this way is a little bit different because your agent's got to get you in there. So you already have to have an agent before you get the, well, maybe not. Maybe it's changed. I don't, you know, maybe people can do that. They might have an opening for people without agents. Yeah, they would do that. What mm -hmm. would you tell somebody who's just starting out in the biz and acting? Um, they First off, you better love it because they're disappointments no matter what. Um. You also better have something else you can do to make some money because there's nobody's going out here to take care of you while you become a star. Some people think you, that's going to happen for them. No, that doesn't work. Uh, you may have to give up more than you want to give up. So you got to be able to take care of yourself. And you, and plus some, uh, some kind of a job that you can, you don't have to be there nine to five. So maybe because of computers and all, you can do that, you know, do something online. But and but the main thing is you got to work and you got to study and it doesn't the study doesn't stop it keeps going and going and going and um, and then you need to get someone that you watch their career and see you know how they did it you know you got to find some mentors and if you can't get them um, by knowing them you can at least look them on, up online and look at their movies and look at things like that and hear what they say that's mentoring these days I guess. Yeah. So, and it's well, not I, easy. IMDb is, is great uh, space for people to try to find a mentor. I mean, mm -hmm. you might have to, like I did go through a few people to get to who you want, but, or who will help you, but yeah. it, it's worth it. It is Having worth you it. Everyone here is worth it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it. It took me a couple of weeks to get you everything straightened out, but. I, I didn't get well, it. Well, it, it, because there's some some, be, things out here, some crazies out here and you've got your little walls up, but you, you know, you did it. You know how to do it. And you connect. You looked online. You said, okay, who's that? Sylvie was, is my press agent yes. still. She's and great. She's wonderful. She's absolutely wonderful. Sylvie Brown, yeah. if anybody needs a press agent, um, she's, uh, she's been, you know how, you know how I got her? We did. We got her for ER, and it was George Clooney that told us that we didn't need our own press agent. We should do a group press agent. But, you know, the secondary, the B cast. That's right. uh, Ellen, myself, um, Deezer. We all had hired Sylvie, Abe, and and yeah. then after we got going for a while and started making more and more money, uh, I hired her just by myself, and that's what they all did too, separately instead of doing group things. Well, she's not like some, she's approachable yeah. to talk to. She's very nice to talk. She's not intimidating. I guess the word I'm looking for, she doesn't intimidate you when you talk to her. Yeah, well, her, is, her whole purpose is to do uh, press for you so she can't put up a wall. Yeah, but there's <laughs> some publicists that I've ran into that are just like, nope, nope, you're not getting any further to that person than me. And I'm saying no. <laughs> well, go around them. Uh, there's ways. I yeah. haven't I haven't done that. I don't want anybody to see in the stick. I do that. I'm not. I that when I did this, I'm just a country boy doing this. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. I'm not gonna manipulate people. No, um, because that's that's disrespectful. Yeah, and I don't believe in that. I know there's a lot. What you're talking about. There's a lot of crazies out Woo. there. Woo. <laughs> you might say, oh, I'm George Clooney's best friend. No, you're not. Right, but there's people out there <laughs> who do that. There's no way. Or I wouldn't assume to say, oh, well, uh, Julia Margulies is going to be coming up soon. Well, anybody could say that. Oh, she's <laughs> had a wonderful career. What a beautiful lady. 
I what a beautiful woman. Her show, Good Good Wife, that one, I've seen it like three times already because yeah. it's phenomenal. Yep. You know phenomenal. she got she got killed off in the pilot. Did she really? Yeah, and then they decided that, uh, wow, we should keep her. So they brought her back. They figured out how to bring her back. into. She came up alive again or whatever, but she was <laughs> killed off. Yeah, wow. and so... That was a blessing for her, for the show, for everybody. Well, if Miss Margulies yeah. is watching, hey, I'm easy yeah. to contact. <laughs> Good one. Yes. Miss Freeman, I appreciate you being here and talking with me. Well, I I've thank so you much very fun. much. I, I could you. talk to you even more. I know you've got other engagements coming up that we talked about. Yeah. I could talk to you all day. I hope you'll come back sometime. I will indeed. And, and, and keep doing, okay? Keep doing what you're doing. Bring in you know, for your charity. And, and I, I read about it and I'm like amazed. It's amazed. Well, we're uh, the only foundation for organization for necrotizing fasciitis. I can't say the word anyway. NF. Okay. <laughs> NF. There you go. <laughs> NF. Oh yeah. Imagine it's spelling that out when you're writing a letter. You have to write it over and over. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you being here. You are so much fun. I love you so yeah. much. <laughs> and you've got a good heart. You've got a great heart. And good questions, too. Thank you. Thank so, you. I, I I try to do what others don't. Sometimes yeah. you can't, but you do I great. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming shows. Please remember to be kind to one another. And you can follow Yvette Freeman at Yvette Freeman 1 on Twitter. You okay. are 